Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're doing another tutorial. We're gonna go ahead and use the Dior Holiday Palette. This one is called Party in Colors. It is this beautiful rainbow assortment of shadows. We're gonna go ahead and create something with the green and the gold today. And also, I wanna talk about some holiday movies since it is the holiday season. I wanna talk about one of my favorite holiday movies, Love Actually. And before we go any further in the video, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. So as you can see, I went ahead and applied some more eye patches here. I am trying these Wander Beauty Baggage Claim Gold Eye Masks. I've never tried them before, but they're gold, so that looks really cool. I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to do, just, you know, hydrate, refresh make you feel very luxurious. So over the weekend, Dave and I picked up our Christmas tree because we like to get a, a fresh one. So we went to Canadian Tire and we got our Christmas tree. And so the living room slash kitchen dining room smells like pine because it has that wonderful smell. We put up some lights, we decorated. It was like the festive weekend. So since it was the festive weekend, I thought let's watch a festive holiday movie. There are so many good ones. Let me know down in the comments what are your favorite holiday movies. But one of my top ones has always been Love Actually. This came out in 2003. By the way, there will be spoilers if you have not seen this film. I'm going to talk about the movie and my thoughts on it because it came out in 2003. I was 15. I feel like I'm dating myself and I'm, I'm now 31 turning 32 and I feel like watching it when you're 15 and watching it when you're twice your that age i feel like i have different perspectives on the movie on the cast so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and use a little sponge that came with the palette here and i'm gonna go ahead and dig into the green shadow so this is an ensemble cast with so many actors there's colin firth hugh grant laura linney emma thompson Bill Nighy, um, Rowan Atkinson, I was going to say Mr. Bean, but you know, Rowan Atkinson. Who else? There's Keira Knightley and the late Alan Rickman. So the entire plot is there's basically eight stories within the movie and they're all sort of related somehow. And it's set in Britain, in London, around the holiday season. So as you can see, I'm just packing this green shade here and then we're gonna go ahead and blend this out after and so since there are eight stories i'm not gonna like focus on every single one because that would take like forever and i feel like there are just some stories that always stuck out to me the most so for me the story that really stuck out to me the most was the one with emma thompson and alan rickman they play a sort of middle-aged couple. It, it's obvious that they've been together for quite some time. I think the movie, it says they've been married for 13 years. They have a couple kids. Um, he works for in publishing, I think. I don't remember exactly the type of work that he does, but he's kind of like a, a boss higher up for a newspaper or a magazine or something to that effect. And I think she's a stay-at-home wife. We don't really know for sure. But she always seems to be a bit frazzled, always running around, chasing after the kids. like you know, like doing all these things. And we don't really know at first that they're a couple together because we see Alan Rickman at his office and it's the holiday season. So people are talking about Christmas and New Year's and he needs to do or organize a holiday party. And we meet his secretary named Mia and she's kind of the opposite of Emma Thompson in the movie. Obviously, she's much younger. Um, she's definitely portrayed in a much sexier light. Her clothing is more revealing and tighter. And I feel like Emma Thompson's character is like frumped up. Like all of her clothing, it looks super baggy. You don't really see her shape. She kind of just looks like a blob in a way. I think it's kind of, kind of to lean into that whole like mom aesthetic. And so, we see Mia, Alan Rickman's um, secretary, being quite flirtatious and being quite obvious about her intentions. And I remember watching the movie originally and really disliking Mia and thinking, well, like, who does she think she is? What is she doing? That homewrecker, you know. But watching it as an adult, 
My first reaction was, Mia is not the one who made a commitment to Emma Thompson. Alan Rickman did. You know, this is his um, employee who is being very inappropriate, and his reaction is to lean into it. I think it's very easy to vilify the other woman or the mistress in this sort of situation, and you know, those feelings do feel valid, but Mia is not the one who was married. Alan Rickman was. So as you can tell where this story is going, we know what's going to happen. So Alan Rickman and Mia continue to flirt a whole lot, being very inappropriate, very, very inappropriate for work, and things just escalate until Alan Rickman and Emma Thompson have to go Christmas shopping for the kids and for each other. And of course, she tells him, just sit here and wait. I'll go do all the shopping for the kids. You just sit here and wait. And so what does he do? He goes into the jewelry section and finds a very expensive necklace and decides to purchase it and is served by the lovely Rowan Atkinson, also known as Mr. Bean. I grew up on Mr. Bean. I watched all of Mr. Bean's holiday spectaculars, the Christmas ones, the New Year's Eve ones. I love Mr. Bean. Anyway, so he does his typical Mr. Bean-esque style and he basically delays the purchase of the necklace and then Emma Thompson just kind of shows up and she's like, what's going on? And so Alan Rickman is like, oh, there's nothing. So he just ends up leaving without buying the necklace. But Emma Thompson sees that he's going to buy some jewelry and she's like, oh, for me? Wow, after all of these years of long suffering marriage, I'm going to get a nice piece of jewelry. So another piece of important information I forgot to mention is that it's very clear that the character of Emma Thompson loves the singer Joni Mitchell. She is a folk singer, I think she's Canadian, and she was popular in the 60s slash 70s, which makes sense with the age of the characters, and she, like in the movie, they repeatedly play the song called The River by Joni Mitchell, and I remember listening to this song when I was 15 and knowing that that would be the song that I would listen to whenever I would get my heart broken, and I did in the future. I remember one breakup in particular that I had in university. I think I was like 21 or something. And that was like my first like real like gut-wrenching like heart heartache, heartbreak. And I just listened to that song on repeat for weeks. I'm sure I drove my um, roommates crazy, but it was very therapeutic. So anyway, in the movie, it's very clear that Emma Thompson loves Joni Mitchell she loves the song in particular. So then they leave the department store. Emma Thompson bought the Christmas gifts for all the kids. Alan Rickman, who knows what he did. So another important thing to mention is that in the story, as it's leading up to Christmas, um, a lot of the kids in the storyline have this big Christmas musical or Christmas play at the end of the year like everyone does. So that's kind of also important in the story because it leads to different characters meeting up at different points. So anyway, it is now the night of said Christmas play and Emma Thompson has worked for several weeks to create these costumes because they've decided to combine several schools for this Christmas play. So usually you have like a nativity scene with like, I don't know, maybe seven or eight characters, but since they decided to combine several schools, they kind of just added random characters so that more kids could have roles in the play so you have like a christmas lobster a christmas squid a christmas spider-man random things like that did i even mention that alan rickman and emma thompson are husband and wife wow i'm a great storyteller so anyway at some point it is shown after the department store that alan rickman comes home late one night and emma thompson is kind of curious to know where he's where he's been but he's kind of withholding so anyway he goes inside the house and she checks his pockets his jacket pockets and she finds the necklace that he was looking at the other day. So she's like, oh my God, I'm gonna get the necklace. So exciting, yay. So fast forward, it is the night of the big Christmas recital with the Christmas lobster and the Christmas squid. And the family decides to each open one gift before they go out. And so since Emma Thompson has seen the necklace, she knows she's getting that necklace. She's so excited. So. She tears her um, box, the present open, 
and she sees that it's not the necklace, but it's an album or a greatest hits of Joni Mitchell. And then the camera cuts to Mia, Alan Rickman's mistress, wearing the necklace that he bought at the department store. And then we see Emma Thompson in her bedroom alone, listening to Joni Mitchell, The River, and it is the saddest, most gut-wrenching scene ever because you see in this moment this woman realizing that her husband has been unfaithful you know it's kind of um appearing as though she has some suspicion as the movie goes on she suspects something but now she knows he bought a very expensive necklace and it's not for her so who is it for and she's seen Mia, she's seen Mia and her husband interact and she has some suspicion, but now it's all coming true. And that is the most devastating feeling ever. It's like the rug getting pulled out under you and you can just see it. You can see, you see these family photos, you see everything, you know, this woman has clearly dedicated so much of her life to her husband and her family and he's made a fool out of her. And then the family drives to the play or the recital and Emma Thompson has this conversation with him and she tells him, you know, you've made a fool out of me. Like he tells her, you know, I've been foolish, I'm so sorry. And she says, not only have you been foolish, but you've made a fool out of me. And it was just, I don't know, that, that whole thing always just gets to me so much because Emma Thompson is such a great actress and you really feel for her you empathize for her and also Joni Mitchell um the river playing in the background is just so touching and just it's so well done I'd like to be clear that I'm not saying that Mia the receptionist was a, a great person in this you know clearly she knew that her boss was married I'm just saying that she wasn't the one who was married Alan Rickman was the one who should have shut things down. He, told, he should have told her right away that she was being inappropriate, but clearly he was interested and he was because he went through with it and had an affair with her. So I just think that he's the one who's more to blame. I think they're like, I think both of them are kind of crummy people. However, I think he's the one who deserves to be vilified more. I'm just going to go ahead and go into my bronzer and use a little bit of that shadow or brown powder and apply it into the crease here. So now I'm going to go into my gold shadow here. I'm going to go ahead and just use the opposite side of the sponge here. As you can see, it's quite small, so it's just per perfect for the inner eye here. Okay, let's go ahead and take these off and do the face makeup. Oh, okay. These eye patches kind of just feel like a regular eye patch, but I guess they look like gold leaf, so that makes them feel very fancy. I have a little bit of dark shadow under here, so I'm going to go ahead and use a bit of eye cream, and I'm going to go ahead and wipe off this dark shadow. So going into a bit of eye cream on the back of my hand and a Q-tip, you're just going to roll a little bit of this eye cream and just get this dark shadow off here. So the story ends for Alan Rickman and Emma Thompson where they're at an airport. Uh, Emma Thompson is there with their children. Alan Rickman is coming home from what we assume is a work trip or something and the kids are so excited to see him. But you can see between the two adults that there's still a lot of tension and it's not exactly a warm welcome for him from his wife, ex-wife. We don't know. The story ends very suspensefully i don't know if that's the word it's just like a big question mark about what happened did she kick him out is he sleeping on the couch are they divorced are they separated are they still married and pretending like nothing ever happened we don't know and that's the most frustrating part i'm going to go into my Giorgio armani luminous silk foundation i'm in the shade 5.5 so that's how the story ends for those two what happened? What do you think happened? Like, what do you think is going on there? Do you think they still stayed married? Do you think they went to marriage counseling? Do you think he got a new secretary? What happened? Like, well, I don't know. I don't know what happened. It didn't exactly clear things up for those two. I'm gonna go into my Clé de Peau concealer here, and this is in the shade Almond. So with my concealer, I always like to just 
let it just sit for a minute or so i find that it just conceals much better so another couple in the movie that i really enjoy because as i mentioned there's eight of them going on at the same time but one that i really liked is the aging rock star and his manager so the rock star is played by bill nighy the manager i don't remember his name i think they're both very well known british actors but anyway bill nighy plays this like older rock star maybe in his like 50s or 60s kind of like a mick jagger-esque type who has done a lot of hard partying hard living and is now into the later stages of his life and realizes he doesn't really have much going on because he didn't you know settle down he never found a partner because he was too busy having several partners at the same time he was doing all sorts of substances etc and he's kind of a washed up like rock star now in the first scene of the movie we see him in a recording studio um not doing so well he is trying to re-record one of his greatest hits and trying to change the lyrics to make it a christmas song because you know he's kind of washed up he doesn't really have anything going on so his team figures you know let's just rework one of your classics and throw the word christmas on it and we'll sell millions and you can tell that he really doesn't care he does not care about anything he knows he's washed up he knows he's a has-been he knows that he's selling out and he doesn't care he knows this is like his last shot at like making some money and just reviving his career a little bit and so it's this very catchy song. I'm not gonna play it because I will get copyright stricken, but you can listen to it. It's called Christmas is All Around Us. I think it's called, it's supposed to be Love is All Around Us, but they smushed the word Christmas is All Around Us. And afterwards we see these characters going on different radio shows and TV shows, promoting this new album and the aging rock star, the character is called Billy Mack, makes it painfully clear that he knows he's selling out he knows the song is terrible he knows it's all like a big gimmick to make money but he doesn't care because he's at a point in his life where he doesn't have anything to prove anymore and he's like maybe like he knows it's like his last shot at doing a comeback so he just doesn't care and he says it directly to the radio hosts and tv hosts and there is some sort of contest or competition to see which will be the number one song in the uk for christmas and he says you know wouldn't it be great if it was some washed up has been old rock star instead of like a new pop band and through the magic of christmas this washed up old uh, rock star gets the number one song in the uk for christmas so taking the same sponge from before i'm dipping back into that green shadow and just tracing it under the bottom lashes here Okay, let's go into our mascara. I'm going to go ahead and use the Volume de Chanel and just put on lots and lots of mascara. Going back into my bronzer. So the story ends for these two, the aging rock star and his manager, where the aging rock star's song becomes number one on the British Top 40 for Christmas, kind of rocket launching his um, second wave or second career. You know what I mean? Like he's getting... A new start at his career and just revamping his whole life and now he's becoming more famous other famous people want to be seen with him he's getting all these invitations to Elton John's uh, parties etc and so he decides to go because I mean who wouldn't I would love to go to Elton John's Christmas parties who wouldn't and so he decides to go but then we see the next scene where his manager is just at home watching TV and the rock star comes in and he tells him that, you know, he was at this party with all these famous people and everyone's like so famous and rich, etc. But he realizes that he spent the majority of his life with this manager because this is the same manager that he's had his whole career. So this man has been like his constant in a way. And so he's realized that he could be at a fancy pants party for Christmas. But since Christmas is about spending time with people that you love, he would rather be at his 
manager's apartment watching TV with him because he realizes that he how much he loves and appreciates his manager in a platonic way. This is not like a love reveal, but it just shows you how love comes in different facets, I guess. I think, I don't know, I just find that really touching because we all think of romantic love as the most important love of our lives, and it can be, but those really strong friendship bonds that we make as adults are also really important. For the blush, I went into my Chanel Joux Contrast number 72 in Rose Initiale. And now for the highlighter, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Duo de Camellia highlighter here. So I thought that was really touching. Oh wow, that is a lot of highlighter, oops. Um, yeah, just showing you those platonic love relationships that we have are really important to us. I think it's really important to us as we get older. Because I think as we get older, it's harder to make new friends and to make friends that, you know, are really important to us. It's so easy to do when you're young and you're in college. It's so easy. But then as you get older, it gets harder. And for the lips, I'm going to go into my Lisa Eldridge Velvet Fawn Lip Color. So this is the finished look. I love this green and gold combo. I just think it's so pretty. And there's something iridescent about that green where it kind of looks like a different color depending on the angle and the lighting. It's so pretty. I love this holiday palette from Dior. It's so bright, it's so colorful. If you want more looks with it, let me know. I will definitely do more. I haven't done enough looks with this palette here from Dior. I think I just got overwhelmed with like new releases, but I will do more tutorials with this one and I can also do more tutorials with the Chanel palette as well. Please let me know down in the comments what you guys think of today's makeup look and also what you think of the movie Love Actually. Obviously, there are several more storylines in the movie. There are so many. It's hard to... Like, it's hard to keep track of all the different ones. There's a couple other ones that I really like. There was the one with Natalie and David. David being the prime minister, Natalie being his secretary, and that whole thing. There was also the one with Colin Firth, the one who's a writer. He goes away to France and he ends up having a Portuguese housekeeper and they fall in love. Um, there's a lot of stories in here. There's a lot of um, info and a lot to talk about, but anyway, let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite holiday movie? Do you like Love Actually? Which one is your favorite storyline or characters? Let me know down in the comments. So if you liked today's video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I know a lot of you guys who watch my videos are not actually subscribed to my channel. So if you happen to like luxury makeup and luxury tutorials, please subscribe. That way you can you know, be around whenever I post more content. So I think this is all I have for you guys for today. So thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.